Hi everyone, my name is Erin Krako, and I'm here with my fabulous celebrity co-star, Rob Buckley. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> We're here to do a, a social live for you to talk about our new movie, Mind Date Book Club as a part of Hallmark Channel's Spring Into Love. And we're so excited to chat with each other and chat with you about Blind Date Book Club. Aren't we? Let's jump into it. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's just jump right in. Let's just dive in. Yeah. So Hallmark Channel gave us some questions that we are going to ask and answer for ourselves and for each other. I've got the first one. It was a little something like this. <clears throat> My character, Meg, has an interest in reading a variety of novels while she manages her late mother's business. Can I share more about what makes her bookstore unique to her customers? I can. Um, there's a really sweet thing that Meg decides to do where she chooses a book, wraps it up in brown paper and a bit of twine, and then writes a few words on the paper kind of describing the book, the genre loosely. And then people come into the bookstore and they choose a wrapped book based on that brief description. And um, then if they like it, they come back and talk about it in a book club. And that's what makes it unique. Right, Rob? I would agree. Yes. Yeah. That that, and the fact that footwear is optional in the bookstore, <laughs> which was an odd choice, but I know. It's special. But some people are really into feet. So there you go. Oh, boy. This has taken a fun left turn right off the top, hasn't it? Next question. Go. Next question. Yes. Uh, Graham who's played by me, is a best-selling author and is at a crossroads with his writing career and hears about Meg's book club through a radio interview. That is all true. That all checks out. Tell us about our character's encounter when he visits her bookstore. Well, I would say that Graham is very charmed by the bookstore. And uh, it starts with a lovely little meet cute. Come on. That's all good romance stories do and, but then it sort of deviates from the norm and um grandma kind of leads with a white lie doesn't he, he does. bit of a bit of a liar that Graham. well a little bit a fun white lie it's a fun white lie uh but it doesn't last long because i think meg sees through that quite quickly and then fun banter ensues <laughs> yeah we, we go from a, a lie to fun banter yeah yeah it's good uh, you're up. Okay. Um, Meg created a book club so her readers could give each novel a chance and not judge a book by its cover. How does this concept apply to her relationship with Graham? Um, well, I think that if Meg were to judge a book by its cover, I mean, Meg and Graham have a really cute, meet cute uh, by the old fairy and mm -hmm. there's instant sparks. And then they have another meet cute with like you know, books falling on the floor and papers and they bump into each other and that's very sweet. So I think judging a book by its cover, Meg is initially really into Graham. And then she learns that he's maybe only there to use her to get, her, to get his book in the book club. And she finds out that he's also kind of a liar. So, um, but, but then she finds out that he's a great guy. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm getting off course here. But, okay, <laughs> judge a book by its cover, she would think, great guy, super cute, charming, meet cute, meet cute, meet cute. And then she finds out not so cute because he's a liar and he's using her. But then she finds out that actually really... He's a great guy. So all that is to say, maybe she should have judged the book by its cover because she thought he was a great guy in the first place. For those of you just joining us, welcome to our social live on our movie, Red Flags Ignored, A Hallmark Love Story. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, he's a liar, he's a cheat, he's in it for himself, but she gives him a fourth chance and it all works out. I think, I think the sequel should just be Meg going to therapy to figure out why. Who hurt you, Meg? I don't know, man. I really should have pre-prepared these questions. No, you shouldn't have. That was perfect. Oh, thank you. No so changes. 
Uh, Graham is seeking to find inspiration as he shifts his writing style in a different direction. How does this connection to Meg and the town help him further his career as an author? Connection to Meg and the town. Okay. Well, uh, I think, first of all, I think why he is drawn to Meg is that she is very honest uh and uh, sort of blunt with him and i think he probably has a lot of yes men and yes people in his life so the fact that he's sort of put in his place immediately i think is is different and and sort of attractive in a way but then beyond that the feedback that she gives him is very thoughtful so as opposed to just being you know told like it's good or it's bad she's actually giving him stuff to think about and to work with um but i I think on a larger scale, what Meg and the town and his experience in the town do is it's sort of, it's kind of a reset button for him. Button for him. He's been very successful for a long time with one series of book. And this visit to the town sort of helps him realize why he started doing this writing in the first place and what he loved about it. And sort of getting back to that truth, which sort of um, helps reignite his literary fire, as it were. So did you like go to interview school or... Yeah, I just took about um, five minutes to prepare these questions ahead of time, Aaron. Okay. Not true. Not true. I didn't. Um, you're doing great. Uh, you want to do the next one? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Meg also finds herself questioning her next career path and wonders if managing the bookstore is the right stepping stone. Why do I think viewers will connect with her journey of self-discovery? Great question. Um, I think that viewers will connect with that journey because who hasn't had a moment or a chapter in their lives where they've questioned, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Um, should I have explored my you know, aspirations to be a marine biologist? Whatever. Like th I think there are, it's a very relatable human experience. And um, so I think people will really connect to that. Also, I think we can all agree that what at least at least half of us wanted to be marine biologists at some point in our lives, right? Yes. 100%. So many people in our generation. Why? Who doesn't want to hug an otter, you know? Well, I mean, no shade. It's a great profession. I just it's like a little unusual that so many of us wanted to do that. And then yeah. did guys when, when when you watch this the movie, uh, in addition to tweeting obviously hashtag blind date book club, please uh, feel free to discuss what you wanted to be growing up. And if it was a marine biologist, why? Yeah, why? Just tell us why. Yeah, it'll be a fun little Easter egg for all of us here in the social live. We'll know who the other ones are on the Twitter. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this is the first time we are star. Oh, this is a personal one. This is the first time we are starring together in a movie. Are there any fun behind the scenes stories we can share? I saw this question ahead of time and I laughed because I thought almost all of them are on Instagram because you are incredible with recording everything. Oh, you like so, that? Yeah, why wouldn't I? I think that's great. I don't know. I mean, it borders on stalker, so I'm glad that it's appreciated. Well, it does, but I love attention, so it's great. Um, but I think it's fun for everyone uh, to get to see this stuff. But let's see. You did post a reel or a story. I don't know. Oh, boy, boy, I sound like a boomer right now. You posted one of those short videos uh, uh, where you were asking me if I would rather work with you or eat uh, a dessert that I had purchased across the street, a uh, cinnamon roll muffin. I think that kind of sums up about 70% of the conversations we had, would you agree? Just me asking you in a like very insecure way if you'd like to work with me again? No, food centric. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Like, yes, you're right. Seriously, think about it. We were, we were talking the first half of the day, be like, what do you want to get for lunch? And then afterwards, we'd be like, hey, what are we going to get? Because we shot in a tiny town, so there wasn't many food options. So it was a very strategic game we played. Right. Also, I love food, so I just want to talk about it all the time, anyways. Yeah, this is a thing that is a, a very unusual, um, quirky, charming thing about you, Rob, that you want to, you don't want to miss out on any possible yumminess from a restaurant. So like, mm -hmm. we would wrap late, we'd be going to, I don't know, some fast food place because there weren't very many options available. And Rob, 
on the drive there, you were like scrolling on your phone through the <laughs> making sure, okay, but like, is it too much if I order this, this, and this? Like, can I also get this? Um, I appreciated that. You want to, you want to just like, get the most out of what life has to offer. Yeah. Yeah. My, because my brain says, you know what, you may never be at this particular Wendy's in British Columbia again. So you need to explore all of the choices in the menu so as not to experience regret down the line. And they let you down, didn't they? Oh my gosh, that was a terrible night for me. Honestly. Yeah, shame on you, that one Wendy's location in BC. But look, this, isn't, this isn't about dragging Wendy's. Let's get back to the questions. No, okay, you're right, you're right. Um, uh, you're up. <laughs> okay, the Hardys are excited for the return of another brand new season of When Calls the Heart. Are there any similarities or differences between Meg and Elizabeth? Elizabeth is the character I play on When Calls the Heart. Just in case a you know. Well, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of there's 10 seasons to catch up on. Um, <clears throat> similarities. Yeah, they both love books. They're both into cute boys. Um, what else? They, <laughs> they're both um, passionate about their careers and um, they appreciate the importance of community and connection. Ooh. Not that Strong one. Strong answer. Yeah. Okay. A plus. Yeah. Uh, since the movie revolves around a book club, spoiler, yeah. if we were to start our own readers club, what novel would we each be interested in talking about? Oh. Mm. Should I go first? Yeah, you go first. Um, <clears throat> I would be interested in reading and discussing Rob Buckley's autobiography, complete oh. glossy photos from his experiences on the set of One Hill and <clears throat> Lipsy and mm. Speak Shores. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's what I would like to read and discuss. Wow, great answer. Uh, I think we were all thinking it. I would go with... Uh, the children's bedtime classic good night moon That's because good. i think i've read that about 550 times and i feel like i would just sound really smart uh i'd have great insights on it do you have anything you'd like to share about that book right now i mean you've got you've got the floor there's a chapter on it in my autobiography so i'll just people can wait and read it there great yeah i go i go in on Good Night Moon. There's a lot of layers there, Graco. A lot of layers. It is lunar, baby. Okay, let's move on to a rapid fire game because I'm great at these. Um, <clears throat> to wrap up our live chat, we're gonna dive into this or that inspired by Blind Date Book Club and Spring Into Love. All right, Rob. Mm -hmm. Read a novel or write a novel? Read a novel. Okay. Great. You? Yeah, same. I think less work. Yep, exactly. Um, host a book club or a dinner party? Is this is this even a real question? It's not hard, this one, but who's choosing a book over a hot meal? What? <laughs> okay, dinner party. Um, we had a nice dinner party together in Vancouver. Um True. do you want to travel or would you rather stay home? Oh, travel. Okay, great. You? I want both. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm a homebody for sure, but I do really enjoy travel. Yeah, I'll go with travel. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Um, manage a business or become an author. I, you go. Do you, this is nothing rapid about this. What's your answer? I guess not. I mean, <clears throat> I think that becoming an author, despite saying I'd rather read a novel instead of write a novel. I think becoming an author sounds more creative and I like being mm -hmm. creative. I guess I'll go with that. And you? Mm -hmm. Then I'll go manage a business because I have a business background and I, sometimes I just like order and predictability. Mm -hmm. And I feel like managing a business would be a lot of just like balance sheets and yeah. sort of rule following. So I might find joy in that. Okay, <clears throat> got it. Um, oh, this one seems specific to you, Rob. This is a Chesapeake question. 
Brendan Penny or Andrew Francis? Brendan Penny. Andrew is a close second, but come on, there's no top in Penny. He's a good guy. Uh, spring or summer? Mm. Faster, faster! Spring, you're, you're right. This has been, sorry, viewers, it has been nothing. Let me 48 minute rapid round. Uh, I, I wanna go with spring, you? Why? Why? Because there's a bit more variance in spring. You mm. get a sunny day with clear skies, but then you might also get some clouds and some rain. And I like a little bit of, uh, you know, all of it. This is interesting. You want predictability and order in your business, but you want variety as it applies to seasons. I can skip therapy this week. I think we've really cracked the case. We've done a lot of work on me. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here for this therapy session. <laughs> um, I choose summer. I grew up in South Florida and I, I like the summertime. So that, uh, that about wraps it up, doesn't it? What mm -hmm. should we find everyone to do this weekend? Well, cancel your Saturday night plans. Cancel the club, cancel whatever fancy dinner, your reservation at the Sizzler, okay? Cozy up on the couch, get yourself some delivery food yes. and tune into Blind Date Book Club. And there's right. two things I wanna remind you. One, use the hashtag Blind Date Book Club, why not? You know, number two, really dive into what you wanted to be as a kid. I don't want that to get lost. If it was a marine biologist, we'd love to know why, but let's just, let's keep this conversation going. <laughs> it is this Saturday, April 6th at 8, 7 central. We can't wait for you to watch our movie. It's got all the cozy vibes and it has mm -hmm. Rob Buckley. And, and Aaron Krako. Yeah. Woo. Bye.